Nani trailer. Welcome back to Chatty Quilt Along. We are on week two. If this is the first time you've heard about this quilt along, there's links, the sign up, get the pattern, all of that right below this video. First, right out of the gate, Havel Sewing is our sponsor. We're going to have six winners for our giveaway. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that at the end of the video. Today is demo of the block day. Here is our block. So simple, right? And using up so much of our stash, which is the whole point. Easy breezy quilting. We're gonna make these blocks. And depending on which quilt size you make is how many blocks you need. So I've got you set up no matter which size you wanted to make. So I'm gonna put up a couple slides that tells you based on quilt size, how many blocks to make. All right, on with okay. the So we've talked about how many blocks we're making. And uh, I told you how many to make for each of the different quilt sizes. But now we're going to shift to strip sets mindset, right? So uh, I'll, I'll put, I'm gonna put up another slide. And this is how many strip sets you wanna make uh, for each of the three different quilt sizes. So go ahead and pull out you know, your light and your dark. Pull out which ones you wanna work with. So that's what I'm gonna do now. All right, once I've got that sorted, I've got my light and my dark strips for each of those set, sets. Then I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of this away um, and save it for next week. So we're only making a certain amount of blocks this week. So we've broken it up to make it as easy as possible. So right here, I have my light and my dark, and these are all the strips that I wanna get done this week. I'm just gonna grab one light and one dark for this demo today. There's my dark, and there's my light. Let me say this before I move on to the actual demo. I, get, I got this a lot with one other quilt pattern, but we're, we're making a, a whole bunch of strip sets this week and a whole bunch of blocks, right? So you don't have to match the same fabrics every single time. So if you've got this fabric, uh, going to be in multiple strip sets. I'm not going to pair it with this low volume every single time. So sometimes I'm just going to, to, to change them up. You don't have to do that, but I always get questions about that when it comes to these style of quilts. So I want to kind of say that up front. All right, we're going to shift viewpoint and I'm going to show you how to sew the strip set. Okay, so here is my light strip on top of my dark strip. I don't think that part is really going to matter that much but I'm trying to keep it as close to the pattern as I can. One thing I want you to notice is that here are those selvages, and I've got them on the same side. And here are where those manufacturer's folds are on this end, and I've got these on the same side. So your selvage might look a little different from this, and that's okay. It might have a whole bunch of words, whatever. That's okay, you just want it on this side, and you want those, those cut ends on this side. We're going to flip our top strip onto the other one where they're you know, facing each other, right sides together. And we are going to put this one right on top. Now, if you're using fabric from different manufacturers, that's perfectly okay. But just know that the, this end may not meet up the way this end does. This is the end that I want you to make sure meets up properly. And that's where we're gonna start sewing. And we're going to use uh, our quarter inch seam allowance for this. And a quarter inch seam allowance, just in case you're new to quilting, that means you're sewing just to the inside of the quarter inch uh, line on your needle plate. Don't sew directly on top of it because then you're actually sewing bigger than a quarter inch, right? So I'm gonna start sewing. And I'm not pinning these or anything, I'm just kind of holding them together. You can pin them if you want to. And then, you know, I just kind of have to keep adjusting and making sure they're, they're smack dab together, you know, flush with each other. I wouldn't want one to be off. And again, my eye is right here making sure that edge of this fabric is on the inside of my quarter inch line. And if, as long as I'm doing that, the majority of the time, my blocks are gonna come out the proper size. 
I can't get them the proper size, it just causes me frustration on down the road, you know, with the quilt. So just a best, a better practice just to try to get it sewn correctly right out the gate. All right, it looks like this. Easy peasy, right? Uh, we're going to go to our pressing mat now. All right, here we are. And just again, this is where it was, you know, cut on the manufacturer's fold, but it got turned into a cut quarter. And my selvages are like this. And look, they don't even meet. And that's okay. So start off, we're going to give this a press to set that seam. All right, and then I'm going to flip it where the dark side is showing so that when I fold this down like this, I'm actually pressing my seam allowance to the dark side. So we're going to do that. And I don't like to use my iron to push this down. I want to push it down with my fingers. And the reason I say that is because I get a lot of um, patchwork pieces that turn out wonky if I use my iron to do that pushing. So I push with my fingers and then I press. And I'm not doing any kind of ironing. I'm going up and down the width of my strip set, uh, pressing that fold. All right, I'm gonna get out my starch and I'm gonna spray. Mostly I'm spraying that center seam, just a little bit, just enough to get it wet. And then press again. And I like to press it until, you know, the starch dries completely. All right, there is your strip set. Let's go cut it up. All right, and I want to kind of give you, I want to throw in a little caveat. <laughs> Most people cut from this way down. I'm right-handed now, but I don't like to do that. I like to cut uh, from this way in this direction. I feel that my flow is better this way. Uh, all right, so what I want you to do is lay your strip out, and I want you to make the edge of your fabric flush with an, a line going across your cutting mat. And that just makes sure that we've got everything straight and we're not cutting it, you know, cockeyed. And then your eyes are gonna come over here to this edge. Now this is the edge I'm cutting from. So if you're cutting from this side, you know, you're over here. The important thing here is that you're cutting from that edge that is not selvage. My selvage is over here, all right? So if you're backwards from me, flipped around, that's okay. Same thing, but you're gonna make sure this edge is on the opposite side of the line you're gonna cut on. So I've got a little bit that I can cut off to give me my clean edge. All right, once I have a little bit over, I am going to line up my ruler. And I'm not looking, I know I talked about this last week when we were cutting fabric, but I'm not looking at this edge because I really can't see that it's on the line. So instead I look at the one inch line and I line that line up one inch away from the, the line I'm gonna actually be cutting on. The lines of the ruler line up with the lines of my mat. Get that in place, and then we're just gonna cut this clean edge off. And then now we have a perfectly good place to start. You're gonna measure these out. Your pattern's gonna tell you, you know, how, how big to make them. You're gonna do the same thing. Line it up and cut. And you're going to go down the, the width of your strip set doing just that. And I'm showing you this with the basic ruler. Next week, I'm going to show you it on the stripology ruler. Most of the time, I use that stripology ruler religiously, but I wanted to have this demo with the basic ruler too. All right, one thing I want you to see is that I'm measuring them twice. I'm measuring them when I lay out my ruler, but before I cut, I go back and I make sure that I've got it right. That old adage, uh, measure twice and cut once, right? That's what you wanna do. Um, your pattern's gonna tell you how many to cut. We've got a little bit to play with, but I wanna, one thing that you may want to do is, is kind of measure it out before you actually make that first cut. Because if you're working with selvages that are bigger than this, Things are going to be a little bit tight and you want to just you know be really really careful doing that all right so now 
I've got all the units that I need to start making these four patch blocks. All right, so this is what we're doing in this step, getting everything pinned and ready to go. And you had a stack of units that look like this. We're gonna take two of them from that stack, all right? And you're just gonna flip one this way. And I'm gonna move this whole thing like this. Um, so now you'll take this top one and you're gonna flip it right on top of the other one. And we're gonna focus right here on this seam. We wanna get this lined up. So because I have my seams, you know, pressed in opposite directions, uh, they, should nest, they should nest up really nicely with each other. And you can feel them kind of slip into place uh, right here between your finger and your thumb. So there it is. When you feel like you've got it nested together, they should be all snug and cozy together. You're gonna put a pin right in that stitch line like that. Then we're gonna pin these ends. So it's gonna look like that. We'll have multiple ones from the same strip set. So flip one of them, get them nested together, and we will pin them. Right now, the purpose of uh, nesting them and pinning them is to get that, uh, get your points to line up. If you don't care about points, don't care on my account. But for some quilters like myself, it is like I can't have a piece with the points off. Now, that's not 100% true. Most of the time, I, I want my points. So I try real hard to get this, you know, just so. And then occasionally it just doesn't work out. So it's up to you whether you decide to seam rip that and redo or that it's good enough for you. So only you get to decide that. All right, let's go back to the sewing machine. All right, back at my sewing machine, and I'm gonna take one of my, one of my units. And same thing as we did when we made the strip set. We're gonna keep the edge of our fabric to the inside of that quarter inch line, and then start sewing. And then I'm going to pull these pins out, you know, before my machine runs them over. And on this middle one where I want everything to be perfect or try to be perfect, um, I'm just going to kind of, I pull it out as I sew it. I think it helps, you know, to get that seam allowance or get that seam just in the right place. Put the next one through. And remember, your, your eyes are on the edge of your fabric, keeping it lined up with that quarter inch line on your needle plate. If you don't have a quarter inch line on your needle plate, you know, get some diagonal seam tape and uh, you know, make, mark your line a quarter inch from your, where your needle is going in and out of your fabric. Last one. All right, now you've got a piece looking like this. We're just gonna take some snips and cut those connecting threads. All right, back to the pressing mat. Okay, so uh, there's my pieces. I'm just gonna kind of put them like this and set those seams. And the reason I wanna do this is because I feel like it makes everything a little bit more precise. And it, if I have any tension in my sewing, from my sewing machine, it just solved all of those issues. So do that. Next, we're gonna put these upside down. We're gonna press our seam open. So I like to give it a very gentle tug, slip my finger between those two seams, just like that. And then I'm going to press it like that. I'm gonna do that for all of them. And look, it doesn't get much better than that. And that's just from a little effort. 
Um, I will say that I have a lot of blocks that I struggle getting that done, but a four patch is not one of them. I will see if that holds true for each piece. Let's see. Good. And last one. Pretty good. Um, I'm going to spray them all with starch. And when I say spray, I'm misting these, okay? So they're not like getting soaking wet or anything, uh, but they are getting some starch on them. And this whole starching business uh, makes me have a crisper block. And I feel like it just really sets me up for success on the rest of the seams going forward. So I'm getting this really nice flat block. Voila, all right. So let's talk about these four patches for just a minute. You may not be this kind of quilter, but I, I have to confess that I am. When I'm making a quilt and I'm using directional fabrics, I will spend all this mental energy trying to make sure, if possible, now some quilts are, it's just impossible, trying to make sure that all of my prints are going in the right you know, directions for your eyes. I do it almost every quilt that I can do it on. This technique of making four patches where you're strip piecing kind of it will not allow me to think that way because remember when we cut them all up we flipped one doing that you're never going to have them all going in the right direction so this is a butterfly fabric and you can see that one of them is completely upside down and one of them is upright and this technique kind of forces me to stop with all the mental energy um, on that. There's nothing I can do. Every single block is gonna have one of them upside down. I actually kind of like this because I don't have to think about it anymore. It takes it out of my brain. Because when, if left to my own devices, every single time I'm going to worry about it coming out right. So I consider this a pro of strip piecing, but maybe it's a con to some people. I completely understand that. Uh, okay, I have, I, I, put, I already told you how many blocks to make for this week, and I have 57 because I'm making that big quilt, so I really, really need to get busy with the rest of these. I'm going to put up that slide one more time uh, to show you, you know, how many blocks to make, just in case you need it. I just want to make sure everybody's on the same page because we have three different pattern sizes to choose from, and I know some of you are making a lot, and some of you are making a little, some of you may be doing your own thing, and that's perfectly okay. Let's talk about the prizes. So again, this week is sponsored by Havel Sewing and this is going to be the most prizes we're giving away at once. So each, there's gonna be six winners and each winner wins a six piece uh, cutting set of all my favorite tools from Havel. So good, good prize. Um, how to enter this giveaway is all in your email that you received as a participant. Again, if you're not a participant yet and you want to be, uh, you need to sign up at the link below this video. Love to see your blocks as you make them. So please use the hashtag StashworkQAL or Checky Quilt either on Facebook or on Instagram and tag me so that I can see those. Um, it's so much fun connecting with people while we make the exact same quilt. That's the best part of it. All right, if you have any kind of issues that you're struggling with while making these blocks, um, please reach out. Uh, Below the video, reply to the email on social media, however you want to reach out. I'm here. Right. Happy sewing. I will see you next time.